Well, this week, a report from the Independent Panel on Climate Change, a group of leading scientists from across the world, warned uh, that our world is facing serious risks. Death, injury, illness from storms, flooding and rising sea levels, mortality and morbidity from extreme heat, malnutrition and death from food shortages, disruption and loss of livelihoods, breakdowns of infrastructure, networks and key services, and mass migrations leading to global instability and conflicts. Yet despite the evidence amassed by scientists around the globe, around six out of ten of Britons are not convinced that man-made climate change is happening at all. Should we have more faith in science? Uh, Professor Tim Palmer, I, I mean, uh, Royal Society Professor of Climate Physics at Os Oxford University, do you despair at the fact that six out of ten people don't buy that it's man-made? Well, I, I don't despair. I mean, I understand. You see, the problem with climate change is it, it's a scientific problem, but it has great implications for society. And, you know, people are concerned about things like, you know, maybe they're concerned about wind turbines in the countryside. Maybe they're concerned about green taxes. Maybe they're concerned about perceived uh, infringements on their freedoms to, you know, drive gas-guzzling cars and things like this. I think the important point, however, is to try to disentangle these sort of issues from the basic science. And the basic science, which I and my colleagues in the uh, intergovernmental panel that you mentioned, are just trying to approach the problem from the s totally policy neutral perspective. No agenda. Of saying, no agenda, no, no agenda whatsoever. Um, I've got no political agenda. I'm trained as a physicist. I believe my, my expertise is relevant to this problem, which is to say, hmm. as we emit you know, 10 gigatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year, we're looking to double carbon dioxide over its pre-industrial values later this century. What is this going to do to climate? What is it going to do to sea level? What is it going to do to flooding, to droughts around the world? Um, incidentally, not just for the next few years, but for the coming centuries, potentially thousands of years, actually. Mm. Um, and the question I think people have to try to get to grips with, and I realise it's a difficult one, is to try and leave aside the policy issue and just say, do I think that these are genuine risks that we are, you know, we are putting on our climate system um, that are going to be very deleterious, could be very deleterious to society. Are these serious risks that we need to consider and, be, and, and take seriously? Now, the question then, what should we do about it, mm. is, is actually then a question for, for politicians and policymakers. And I think in this, in this debate, it really is important to separate out these two issues, mm. the science and the policy. Yes, it's over to the politicians after that. Dr Andrew Pinson, you see, for science, we have a sort of general discussion in the next 15 minutes or so about science and about faith in science. Scientists tell us what, through the scientific method, you know, testing and formulation and hypothesis, they tell us what is happening and why it is happening. They do not have an agenda. Um, well, with this word science, of course, science covers a huge range of different um, topics and uh, disciplines. I used to be a particle physicist. The goals and methods are very different to zo zoology, for example, which are in turn very different to the social sciences. So when, when people say, do we have faith in science, I think we've got to distinguish what kind of science and how good is that particular um, kind of science. Um, Let's leave the social sciences out for the sake of this debate. OK, I, I'm also making a value <laughs> judgment. Uh, but, just, but just making the point, you have to distinguish what you mean by the term science. And the other thing is that uh, a particular science uh, is often very good at doing what it does well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so physics is very good at measurement. Um, but it's no good at setting ethics or um, political policy um, or teaching the appreciation of music. So then the problem is with the climate science is that, um, as Professor Palmer pointed out, um, the politics has got uh, um, in interwoven with the scientific assessment. Well, that's not his fault. Um, actually, uh, I'd, I'd be interested to question him on this because the, the introduction to the IPCC report is not just written by scientists. I think actually politicians do get involved with that. But I'd be interested to hear uh, his, his um, perspective on that. Well, I, th I think it's important for people to, to read, you know, read the reports, read either the IPCC or read report, a report which very recently came out by, um, by the Royal Society, which just tries to set out the science. So, you know, in a sense, I don't think people should have bl blind faith in science. But what they should do is look at the evidence that's put out by IPCC, by the Royal Society, by other learned societies, and make up their own mind. Mm. I have a house. Do you, actually, can I ask you a question? Do you despair when you... I've, I've said, you despair. despair. Lots, of, lots of despair this morning. But are you, are you angered 
when you see debates, for example, on you know, settled science like, 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 like evolution or, or, or climate change or atomic theory or, or whatever. Or, or that homeopathy is a Well, fake. we'll come to yeah. homeopathy in a minute. Uh, uh, and you yeah. see it sort of uh, equivalence given on the broadcast channels, because the BBC has yeah. been criticised for this. You, you, you might see, you know, Nigel Lawson up against uh, exactly. Professor Walker. Do you, does that anger you? Yeah, it's frustrating, but I like to get even by having the opportunity <laughs> to explain, firstly, why science, why we should have, I think faith's the wrong word, uh, confidence, more confidence in science. It's why, when we get on a plane, we want to know that it's been checked by the engineers, not that someone's blessed it or prayed <laughs> over it, or a politician's asserted that this is the best plane ever. That's not faith. I mean, you're right, else. it's about confidence so in science. It's confidence yeah. in the scientific <coughs> method. What yeah. is the scientific method? It's more than just hypothesis, yeah. experiment and conclusions. It's continuing scepticism, mm -hmm. okay, it's declaration of all your interests, it's having it criticised before you get your funding and then before you can publish it, and it's continual uh, building on the work of others. It's completely different from the way politics and religion works, and it's why we must rely on it when we're asking very important questions like vaccine safety, for example, or whether certain mm -hmm. treatments work, whether we, should, whether we should have confidence in what the doctor's offering or what the quack's offering. There is a difference between evidence-based treatment and other. And indeed, when we listening to whether there's a business interest on climate change or a politician like Nigel Lawson, and the overwhelming majority, the overwhelming consensus of scientific opinion. Of course, there are mavericks in science. That's important. But when you have a consensus, mm -hmm. it's critical that politicians listen to it. And I think we should be voting for politicians, and it is all our decision, who say, I'm going to make on these issues, not on everything, but on these issues, the policies based on what the evidence well, drug, is. Drug, drug and laws are it, interesting. It's a very good example. Yeah. It's far better if you want to minimise yeah, Professor harm. Nutz is one thing, and then he's marginalised, isn't he, when we're talking about, you know, decriminalisation Yes, yeah, so what harm. the last Labour government did, and, and mm. they did some good things for science, but this was very bad, they, they prevented independent scientific advice from being independent by saying, if you argue with what we say the science says, we as politicians, we will sack you, and that's what happened to him. And it's very wrong. Well, Andrew, quick, 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 Andrew, very quickly. And then uh, I want to move on to homeopathy, if I may, and other... other mm. Go on. As the topic is particularly um, climate science, I'd be interested to hear a bit more about from Professor Palmer, is whether he thinks this is a peculiar kind of um, problem in science. If the Earth is not a system we can, we can sort of experiment with repeatedly, as we do with other kinds of physical systems. We rely a lot on modelling. Um, there are massive feedback problems. So it would be interesting to hear, to hear from, from you, Professor Palmer. Do you think there are particular challenges to climate science we don't face in other kinds of uh, sciences? Well, you're right to say we can't do an experiment in a laboratory to see what climate change will do. But we can get some evidence from, from past climates. And we have to use uh, the, the laws of physics to try to understand what's going on. I think a, a kind of key point for me that distinguishes good science from, from bad science or even non-science mm. is an ability to estimate and quantify uncertainties. So you, you mentioned in your introduction the word risk, and this yeah. is an excellent word because it describes precisely how climate science tries to deal with the diff challenges uh, that were mentioned. We try to frame the problem in terms of the risk. What is the risk of, of exceeding two degrees, three degrees, four degrees, five degrees, you know, in the coming century? Yes. Five degrees, incidentally, being the difference between the last ice age and the present day. So oh, five yeah. degrees calamitous. So the impl implications, yeah. Other types of, you know, um, astrology, for example. You don't ever get any indication of what's the uncertain, you know, you'll meet a tall, dark stranger. Well, yes, but with what probability? That's never... That's mad. And that's, <laughs> that's the crucial question. And the, and the Nigel Lawsons of the world are adamant that there is no danger whatsoever that we will, you know, have dangerous climate change. That's not science. So it's, it, there's, no, there's no indication that there is any uncertainty in that view. And, <laughs> and I think that should be a hallmark for people listening to science or potential science. Are they giving credible estimates of the uncertainties that undoubtedly there yeah. are? OK. Yeah, and it's, so it's a matter of prove us wrong. That's what it's proved as well. Right, uh, homeopathy, you mentioned it earlier on. Uh, if I get a chance, we have Wes Ian, who's uh, homeo Hello, homeopathic, homeo homeopathic practitioner. Indeed I am. It is not the easiest thing to say. No. Um, so, um, how does it work? Well, what's the, like what's the science the of it? Over there, Can maybe. we just move it on to, well, to yeah, if, if but, I may, but, because we haven't got okay. a lot of time. No, the point was that, that there are many forms of science. Oh. There are different ways of looking at it. How does yours work? Well, ours works by, over a long period of time, we've gathered a huge amount of evidence um, on the medicines that we use from all sorts of sources, including our patients who get better 
and then we, we, we record that evidence and we match it against the individualised cases that we take of the people who come to us. Everybody's an individual. It's not placebo. It's not placebo. And one Everybody's an, well, I can document and show you that we can progress a case according to the principles that we've had, we've operated What's on What's happening in the body? Years. What's the, what the actual Well, once, once, of the once a, if, a, if, a, if a person who's unwell or, or not functioning properly comes along to you and, and explains what those circumstances are, um, and we find the right remedy for that person by matching those two, um, two, two things I've talked about, the person, if the remedy is the right one, will begin to get better from their own healing process. The body can heal itself, and they homeopathy get better on their own, triggers don't they? that. I mean, so Sorry. people use homeopathy, and everyone has it's a free country. They can use it, and people make money out of selling it. But it's usually used, and I hope it's only used for conditions that are self-limiting. So people not feeling great, a touch of the nerves, and people get better. So if I, I don't know, jump up and down and shake and, and cough three times. And I have a cold, a week later I will not have a cold. It won't be because no, of what I did, it's because of our immune systems. And so no. you cannot say well, yeah. scientifically that because someone gets better after they've paid you money for a, a sugar pill, that the sugar pill has cured and them. And there was, in a 2010 report, independent report, which said it's just a placebo. I'm it sure you know a, about it that. It was a parliamentary report, report. and I don't think all the evidence was gathered in the... In oh, the what, what's going on in the, in the body? What's the, what's the, 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 the neuro... There isn't a neuro. The, 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 the body is a whole mechanism. It's, it's so not, holistic? Yes. It's not, it, we can't say it's neurological mm. or whatever it may be. It's part of a whole process that takes place. And the healing is, is from within. The healing's from within. You see, this is the sort of... It's not, it's not science, it's, it's nonsense, or it's anti-science. And it, is, it can be dangerous. So it's not just harmless. Because if people who have serious conditions that need evidence-based treatments to reverse the disease process rely on homeopathy or snake oil or your faith healing then the risk is that they don't get the treatment that they need and also the placebo effect is powerful I take I understand that people benefit from it but it relies it's on deception it's most strong it's most strong when people are deceived into thinking they're actually getting something when in fact with homeopathy they're getting something that's been practically infinitely diluted. Mm. So there's no molecule left. Um, so there, are many of your colleagues, there are many of your colleagues in Bristol who work in the Bristol Homeopathic Hospital, yeah. trained medically, who've moved to homeopathy because they've seen how there's effective always, it is. I, there's always a few mavericks. No, no, let, let, me, let me tell you audience. Let me tell you audience. Let me tell you audience. There's many more we, people than a few and mavericks. We, 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 we love mavericks. Without them, we wouldn't have a programme. Uh, so, yes, sir, and then I'll come to you. But quickly.